I think they're out here right now. 300? Okay, that's a lot. Okay. All right. Well, all right. First thing I want, I want to bring up a couple things first. I want to tell you all, we really appreciate you coming out here, okay, and taking the time to do that. Um, there's another factor that's been brought to my attention, and it, I'm not saying it would happen, but there was a rumor spread around that somebody might try to pull a stunt tonight and make you think you saw something in the forest. That it wasn't, you know, it was a UFO or an alien. So if you see something, be careful when you watch it, okay? Don't just immediately think something's here, all right? All right, I'm just being straightforward. That was brought to my attention that there might be a group of people that like to screw with us. So I'm not saying they would, but who knows? Um, uh, just it. It's a pretty decent pike. That, well, we're going to have to go in. We, it was closer for us, but you can't get in there that way. You're going to have there's a road down there, and for this many people, it's going to be pretty unsafe. So. What we might do is try to explain it to you here, and if you want to go down on your own to get a feel for it, it might be a better thing to do. Because some of you may not really want to. It's going to be muddy. It's going to be, it's a narrow path, and there's a long ways to go. So what we might try to do is give you a feel for it right here and show our positions and talk about it a little bit more, okay? And then if you guys want to go down there and take a look, you know, that might be the best way. Because there's going to be a lot of people going down there. And you can see. From here, it probably take a good 20, 25 minutes to go down. Because we got to remember, when we went down, we went in a vehicle and we went so far in. So it's a good, it's a good haul down there. Okay, so, so what we're going to do now is this is where we came down and we stopped at the stop sign. Or Okay, we went to the stop sign and made a quick turn, okay? And when we got down here, this is about where I would have, you know, somewhere blinded you. Somewhere in this area is where I jumped out and, and opened the door and felt the static electricity and we, we really didn't like what was going on. So, and I know I keep saying this, but any light off, please. The meteor came down with the meteors to be in. It's somewhere out that way, out in that direction. Okay, but any light off, guys? Can you see it? All right, so all I'm saying is, is this is what the feeling where we were, the feeling I got that wasn't right, and then we hauled back hooked up to the gate and poured it in. All right? And I think Jim... <laughs> I think we're going to try to describe what we had happen to us right here in Red Dragon. We're, we're going to get into the woods where we came up to it. Okay? How's that sound? You ready? Yeah. Well, what our position was, what you remember now, what you felt the we other were, day. We were making heavy ground time. Yeah, first of all, a lot younger. I mean, we'd run a full run. Stop, reacquire the target, take off again, reacquire re target, take off again. You know, so we're moving on it pretty fast. Where are you at, John? Right here. How Nobody high, around me. How high was it? In the sky? Okay, I'm going to tell you where I was. I don't even want to tell you about it right now. What was the vegetation like compared to today? Obviously, none of these trees are here at the time. Uh, it, the, it was uh, pretty uh, low. The ferns were like growing like. Uh, uh, Has anybody been down to the far end down there where there's some pine trees that are there? No. Yeah. The, the yeah. very far end down towards yeah. the end off that logging road, there's a section of the forest that was pretty much exactly like it was when we went through, oh, yeah. right in that area. And, and the trees, some of them look like they've been there, you know, still from before then, you know, during that time frame. And there's some new ones. But that was more of the, the, the layout of the forest that I, as I remember. So much, much more mature. Yes, very tall, like this. And that's why it was important to come back here now, too, because they said the forest is about in the same shape it was, other than, obviously, the road was cleared up there. This is more like what you were dealing with. A little bit smaller, John, but they're almost the same. These trees are almost the same. <laughs> right. This is unique for all of us. Anyway, where are we at? We're gonna, well, let's just line up the way, the position we were, what you remember. You can talk about how you walked around it, the whole school. I think that's the best way to do it. Where are we at the moment? We're just at the end of the Eastgate Road on the road. End of the Eastgate Road. Right. Now this is, Jim, I want to, I want to stop him because I want to clarify something. Jim, over the years, has said Ed was not there. Okay? Oh, was there. Yeah, he wasn't there in some statements and he didn't remember. After he came out here, and looked at my statement and went through everything again, you can go ahead and tell them what you felt. That was quite an emotional experience when a light bulb came on there. I remember exactly what it was. I told a recall, usually it happens at crime scene, 
you know, with witnesses, you get total recall. But it was because John was with me, I had it this time. I've been on here before. Anyway, we had, uh, I don't know how far we went. John had uh, so it's that. But we were traveling. Not with you. No, anyway, he doesn't want to be involved right now. But he, was he with you? Yes, the whole he was. The whole force lit up. white light. And there was a And uh, they said, okay, hospital security situation. Then the lights start dissipating down and uh, getting lower. It's a bright white light. And we come out into the, in, into the trees. We're going up over these berms. These berms are this high. They're pretty high. They stretch for, I don't know, maybe 50 feet in every direction. I, I have no idea. And uh, then all of a sudden we're surprised because we're not, we don't have contact with that light. We're surprised because all of a sudden in front of us is bright light. I mean, it's so bright that you can't see. It's almost as bright as this thing over here. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty bright. I'll say this. Our, um, our perimeter lighting on the base is a hel halogen type. I would say it's 100 times the intensity of this. And it came out fog. And by doing research, the fogging means there was radiation. Because that's what would cause the fog. Okay? Yes. If, it's, if you get a camera in an area of radiation, it will fog the film. Yeah. I think um, Neville developed his own <coughs> And it came up fog. And right. it came up fog. It came up fog. And so did some of the other films. But I do believe that the, with the role going like that, there was more than one, I was told. Probably one was the command post tapes, and the other one was some pictures. So there's a good shot there. Using some but the tape is what it blow it open, guys. Because we're talking about this stuff as it's going down. And, and you can even hear it. That was another thing about the initial hall tape. Did you hear the radio traffic in the background? That was real. That was going on. He was out there. He was in the forest. And some people, well, I didn't hear trampling. I didn't hear this. Well, okay, fine. But it was legit tape of what he was describing. And think about this. Do you think a lieutenant colonel that has a career as a career uh, officer would make a tape to bring it out to pull people in the lakes and go through everything he did? He didn't. It's legit. He didn't expect that tape to come out. He didn't expect the memo to be released. We didn't expect any of that to happen. And then we then were accused of denying or covering things up. And then after we told, you, told people what we saw, then we had the White House, the helicopters, Apollo, all this other stuff. But we're honestly trying to tell you what we remember. We're giving you some of our hypnosis tape for the first time. And it's hard to deal with that. And you can speculate on what's facts or what we were led, but there's a lot of good stuff in there that doesn't add up and why is it there. And the fact that this coach came up. And I understand there were some people upset it's taken this long. But I, I, I'm not speaking for Jim now, but I don't know what, I didn't know what binary codes were until after the numbers were shown to me, it was explained to me what they were, and that they're verifiable. And they are. And, and, and how could you sit down and make up numbers and that's something that really did come out? I, I don't know. He, he wrote something down that, that he had it down with. Thank you. And it's there. Thank you. We found those numbers. Jim, had, Jim was the one that re remembered those numbers and wrote them down. And yeah. it's in his notebook. And when, did he, when did he? Jim, when did you write the numbers down? None. Uh, well, the morning that we went back in there, uh, that's when I went back out to the plastic cat. It was the following day, on the 27th. Yeah, is it not working? And, uh, that's because of the surprise of the rain. That's something I had to do. I don't know how to explain it. So anyway, after I finished it, though, uh, the drive to, to do this, uh, I had to do that. Yes. I had to go out there. I said, oh, no, John. I said, that's, that's, that's going to stop. It is, because why would you want to go through that again? What what would he go through again? What we experienced on the first night. So, you know, John, John actually has a key to this stuff that uh, I, uh, he can't remember everything, but it's there because... The only guy who's been there on two nights, on both those nights, uh, he's a valued witness. 
Go ahead, Joe. Can I just ask why you thought to, to, to fire on it when it was unidentified? What made you feel stressed? Uh, I had a WTF moment. Uh, I, uh, I was scared. I was scared. I was 26 years old. Uh, I was uh, in fear of our life. I wasn't armed, and I wish I would have. Because I would have emptied a couple clips in that. That would have started something, I'm sure. I don't think it would have hurt, actually. Did you try and communicate with it first? Or would it just mean to Put this in your mind. You're out here looking in this forest. And you thought it was an aircraft crash. You get up to it, there's light, and then you see a triangular craft up here. And it seems aggressive because it's not something simple like a crash or something unknown. Yeah, it felt hostile at that point. Was it hostile? I know it was doing it was something out there I'd never seen before. It wasn't supposed to be there. I guess what I'm getting at is there's a feeling of threat but well, we felt good because it was unknown I think it's the main thing uh, uh, I lost I currently need the helping hand when I started walking around it was just benign it wasn't doing much Oops, you any recollection of what went through your mind that led you to get, reach out and actually touch this it seems an incredibly brave thing to do I was in awe I didn't know what the hell was in front of me what is this thing what is this what I'm not sure thing? there are that many of us standing here would have gone and reached out and touched it <laughs> I had, I had initiated a helping hand situation. I mean, you know what? This comes up all the time. I don't think I did anything other than normal stuff. Do you mind a question? Um, how long after you touched the symbols of the car did you take off? I, have, I have no way of uh, gauging the time. I don't know if it's 10 seconds. I don't know if it's 20 minutes. I don't know. Do you think by touching the symbols to the bank to the the bottom of the train? suppose so. Could have been possible. It could have been just accidental. It could have been meant to be. Maybe they weren't supposed to know. Maybe they were incapacitated. I have all these things going on too. I don't know. I don't have answers. These are questions. You know. Um, I have two. You have two. Yeah. Have you ever had them turned back into a positive again and actually analyzed professionally? I have. Uh, who did I talk to? I'm sending somebody over here. Uh, scrapings off one of them. Uh, halt said he did the other one, but then I had Dot tell me and put, she put it in a shopping bag. What the hell is that about? You know, I don't know. I, I, I mean, secured them better than that. I think they are positives anyway, aren't they? Uh, we, so had they po we had positive. The shape of the yeah, they're a negative, yeah. they're a negative, aren't they? So that they're opposite to the hole. So if you actually yeah, I heard over here that said. You can actually see the shape of the hole and measure Oh, it. yeah. You know, these, these here. Measure, uh, you know, when I after poured, there, I don't know if you can see my hands or not, shit. Probably. <coughs> I went on the ground that far. This ground was 32, it's frozen ground. You guys walked out here before in a frozen ground? It, they, uh, one of the craft, uh, one of the uh, airplanes they brought in uh, the week after, and they shut this whole side, we should have showed you that over there. They shut this whole side off, though, where Delta's restricted area was. They shut that off, they put up, uh, uh, plastic uh, fencing and stuff like that. And they had teams come in from Langley. Halt's confirmed this too. And uh, and they, they said, based on the ground temperature, the soil, uh, the weight is seven tons. <coughs> that's how that's and I'll tell you what, seven tons is like feathers. You don't have airplanes fly. That's like, that's pretty much. Like. Uh, sure. aircraft yeah. weighs, uh, Around uh, you know, 18 tons, 20 tons. It's up there. That's not a big plane either. That's small. That's 15 or 8 by 25. I mean, this one was here. That's light. But then how was it standing up? I don't know how. I don't know how it got with seeds on the legs to the light. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> Okay. <coughs> this is really educated on how I did that? With no measuring device out there? <laughs> I took long strides. That's three feet. My stride. Not how you did it, but you know, what would in your estimation how big was it in the height Okay, it was three meters by three meters by three meters. Approximately uh uh well, whatever seven feet is, six and a half feet. Mm -hmm. Is it three meters high? 
Well, not quite. It was it was over my height. I'm six two, and it was it was over my height. So whatever that is, I, I'm yeah. guessing. I had no way of measuring. It. And there was distortion of time as well. Oh, yeah. That's uh, we. Didn't, I don't. Uh, we. I tell you, when we went into the bubble area of uh, this, this, this invisible area around it, that's when the uh, whole uh, area of uh, the sound went dead and everything. Uh, and um, then the next time we noticed a tiny problem was, oh, we went uh, back to CSC, turned our weapons in. My watch is 45 minutes off. You know, I thought I broke it off. Maybe. And uh, so I shut that up and said, damn it, I lost the watch. I said, Honestly, you know, what time is it? So I lost 45 minutes on my damn watch. It's all with the batteries, so I don't know. That's not good. That's not good. We both have 45 minutes left. Where did I lose it? I don't know. I have no idea. He lost the same thing. We only found that out, you know, last year. Hmm. What? So, you know. So how come you never actually talked, you never actually talked together before? Or? John? But that's the weirdest thing in the world, isn't it, why we haven't talked about it for 30 years. We rode together. We rode together we never talked about it. We didn't have a need to talk about it. We were, we wanted to go away. Uh, and besides, we were both standing beside each other. What is there to talk about when you're both there? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, we, we never talked about it, and uh, partly because they said it was also classified and stuff. We didn't, we didn't have a need to do it. Actually, you know, to be honest with you guys, top secret, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care if he had a secret clearance and it was top secret. I think I would have talked about it to hey, John. He's out with him. What's, what's it? What about that light, you know, or something like that? We would have been talking. We never did. So This is an unknown. You're wondering, why wouldn't a normal person do this? I don't know. I have no idea. We didn't. Did anybody try to prevent you guys from talking to each other? Yes. During the, uh, our, my hypnosis, uh, one of the things that OSI, in the OSI building, when it was said, and Linda has the exact taking of this, is it says that uh, John and I cannot get together again. We can never, we can't, they gotta keep us apart. And the reason for that, because we'll figure it out. And we're about as close as shaving up this one right now. We just gotta make sure that when we present it, everybody knows that you know it's, it's the authentic uh, uh, entry from the notebook and all that stuff. Because if I was you guys, I'd be of course. Yes, of course. I'm oh, not bothered yeah. about that. I'm bothered about the amount of time. No, no. Um, um, not in the hotel. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, but we had a, a need, uh, a urge, a drive. Thing. That's why we're here. Mm. Can't happen today. Area 51 people don't have that. Right? Yeah. They, they just got those spaceships over here. Something like that. I don't know. Something out there. Keep going on that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You got an audience on the Area 51 thing. Keep going. <laughs> you know, I actually been to Area 51. And it's, uh, like. it's actually research. <laughs> you know. So you did a uh, hypnosis regression session. And uh, that was 1996 or 1994. And it helped you remember details that you were recording? Uh, what it did is that I don't remember. I was talking to a guy who said he had hypnosis and he remembered. And I'm going to tell you what, I think it affects everybody different because John was different than I was. I don't remember the hypnosis sessions, you know, going through it. And so I, when I watched the, uh, uh, the film, I watched part of it, like five minutes, I didn't remember. It was all new, it was like watching a movie. And so, prior to coming over here, uh, Linda Moulton Hall took it, put it on DVD. She uh, uh, pestered me to death to watch it. Uh, finally, I had enough courage to watch it. I didn't have anything to do, just to tell you. I watched the whole thing for the first time. I didn't have anything to do, just to tell you. Parce que moi, euh, je sais pas si c'est un bouffe ou un peu rose quand même. 
what did you see or not see? I mean, what did you, what did you say during hypnosis? What do we do? What part? What part? Well, as for, um, let's say, interaction with the craft. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I, doing the 360 around it, you know, touching it, trying to figure out what it is, trying to find out if there's some way to get in. No, but that was all there. The information stream in 94, that was there. The code system. What about the future? That was in the hypnosis too. Yeah. 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 That, 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 that's uh, we said that, that they're from 40, 50,000 years in the future, and it was us, and, and things like that. Okay. That's in hypnosis. Is it true? Yeah. Hell, I don't know. I have no idea. Jim, did you receive any telepathic messages? Yes. Yeah. Well, I had the symbols. Well, apart from that, like the cross. That was nice. Man, I'm going to tell you what, you would just freak out if you had that happen to you. Mm -hmm. You would. No control over it. Now you gotta go in. That was the worst part, and you hear on John's tape yeah. coming back in. I, and I never, that just freaked me out when I heard that today. We're coming back in, we're going, okay, all right, how are we gonna explain it? <laughs> we can't tell the truth. I don't want to tell them that shit. You know, we gotta think, we gotta sanitize them. We did. We're part of the cover up. Yeah. We sanitize it. Uh, not that I know of, but. You're asking to take a guess? Really? I think so. He had beams of light through <laughs> all over him, you know, so that's a guess. So I don't know. But the message that uh, they came from 45,000 years ago. Do you, I mean, do you recall who said that or who communicated that to you? Yeah. What did they look Done like? Telepathically, according to the hypnosis. Linda Moulton House got a book out, and I'm going to say it wrong, I think. It's the um, glimpses of other realities. The transcripts are in there. Uh, so, you know, you guys listen to you know, go ahead and read it and uh, make your own decisions on it or throw it out or whatever you want to do. I, yeah, but, I mean, could you please go a little bit more into detail? I mean, um, why did they come back to the uh, In there it said uh, for uh, uh, something with the timeline, something with the uh, fixing of the uh, 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 generic stuff. I, it didn't make no sense that all the stuff that was being said to me. I mean, it just don't make sense. So it sounds like just ludicrous stuff to me. Okay. Same thing about readjusting the timeline. Ah. Yeah. It's, yep, that's part of it too. You gotta really get that book. And here's the worst part. That part of the tape I can't find. I mean, I, we sent it off to one of the filming companies. So that section is gone. We have the transcript. We have the audio of it. We don't have the visual on it. So, uh, but Linda's working on that too. I don't think she's out here. <laughs> Anything else? John? Pretty cold. I love it. We ain't no, no, no more answers. <laughs> I got a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> I got just as many questions as you guys have got more. I think I, I, did I ask it in front of you guys, the part about why there was no response by nobody? Nobody responded? Your air forces didn't respond on unknown bogey? Don't you find that a little strange? Mm -hmm. yeah. Does that make you feel safe sleeping in Ipswich? <laughs> no. And I think Nick Pope went an extra mile tonight when he started talking about MOD. Yeah. Well, uh, that's the first I heard that. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's really surprising. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Do you do you remember what they did to you uh, after that de de debriefing or you know interrogation? They had to drive me home. I was so uh, I was drugged. I mean, I was. Just Which kind of drugs? Sodium pentothal. Have you ever had it done to you? You go to La La Land. True you can't true. remember shit. You just La La Land. And, uh, yeah, you, you you have no willpower apparently. So uh, I don't I don't see a problem with that because they wanted to ascertain if I knew the truth. You know, be honest with them. They were open with you while giving you the they, struggle. Yeah, I signed a release. I signed a release with them. Yeah, okay, sure. Just leave me alone. They just kidnapped you like I did Larry. They actually told you what they were doing. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I believe there's more to Larry's story than what is really he knows. <laughs> but it's guessing. I think there is a concerted effort to uh, produce disinformation, and the good one is a UFO. Yeah. 
Third, they have hundreds of them. UFO story. Let's talk about aliens, green men. Let's talk about that stuff. You blow it right off. I think that was done, and I think they did that probably be, uh, to him because he was talking about it, and he was just a likely candidate. I mean, it's unfortunate. He, it doesn't mean he wasn't screwed with. Doesn't mean he has some ter- serious trauma from it. Uh, he's not sure what's real, what's not real. I mean, I talked to him tonight. Uh, he's just as wrecked as I am. I mean, we're all, we're all wrecked. The same no. with um, Adrian Bastenza, presumably. Bastenza? Yeah, because he was in the underground facility with Maui as well. I don't know that, but it sounds like probable, yeah. So what exactly, can you recall what happened during the briefings when they drugged you and to which purpose? I mean, why? When they drugged me, I can't, I can't remember that. Like, I mean, I was like, you know what they tell you to do? Now, you know, they go ahead and put a rubber thing on your arm and they shoot something in you. And when they release it, they say, count back from 100. And I went, 99. It's done. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> 99, I remember that. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> this stuff is strong stuff. 99. <laughs> yeah. Jim, Jim, sorry, is this where you ran the location where you saw the landed craft? Or is that well, it's, we're not in the exact location. We have to go down the road. How far to... is it from here? Uh, actually, from point four or location four on this UFO yeah, thing. Trail. It's actually uh, probably uh, about 100 meters, mm-hmm. not 100 meters, 100 yards uh, to the right as you look by picnic tables out there. Um, Are we able to go there? Can we go there? Well, I tell you what, one thing you don't want to do is get lost out here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, this fog, is you can get lost out here. I mean, I don't want to do it. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We gotta go to bed. Four, you guys yeah. 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 We're tired. Thank you. 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 Thank you.